I want to talk to you about product design. And I want to do that by giving you some examples that came out of a year-long class that I taught over 13 years. It was a cross-campus class that I created with engineering, business, design, and a variety of other students. They went through the entire process of product development, and they ended up with a prototype and a very comprehensive business plan. So I'm going to use some of these prototypes that came out of this learning experience. So let me first start off with a couple of examples. When they went to the context in South India, they realized a much bigger need, which is for spoken English. Now, spoken English can be a way up and a way out of poverty as well, because it opens up a lot of opportunities. So the students came up with this very interesting prototype, which involved basically uh, to uh, have a child sign into a program. The parents learn from the child as well. And the signing in is done through a cell phone that the parents have. This means a program comes on their television and the child learns from the program and also is matched up with other children uh, who have similar English uh, speaking ability. The child also provides a voiceover for some of the video content and so on. So it is very interesting in that it was something that addressed low literacy with respect to English. It addressed spoken English. It also used devices already available to the household in order to provide this solution. Another example is a nutritional powder. When you have a nutritional product, it's very important to think about what is in it, what will it be added to, in what form, and how will you package and educate about it. So for example, if it is a powder, does it have certain types of nutrients, or does it have the entire meal for the day for a child? What will it be added to? Is it to the staple food? Is it to milk? Is it to water? In what form will it be? And of course, what the packaging will be, because packaging is an opportunity to educate. Now, this has to be culturally appropriate. It also has to be locally sustainable. And what I mean by that is that there are people in the community who know others, and they could be your local entrepreneurs who are then able to take the powder, customize it for different people in a family, like elderly people get a different uh, configuration and so on. So they can play an important role in adding value to your product while also making a living. So that's part of the local sustainability as well. Another project involved eyeglasses and testing for vision. And this project involved uh, a solution where a vision entrepreneur would go to a village, deploy a kiosk, have all the inventory ready, do the testing, give out the eyeglasses, and then basically move on to another village. So this was a very interesting solution. The idea of deploying a kiosk was very interesting as well, and it needed to address a number of issues to serve needs. We also had a student group create a solar panel for vending carts. The idea here was that it would add on to an existing vending cart. So you cannot automatically say, we're gonna create a whole new cart. You have to think about how your product can add on to what is already there. It was interesting uh, because I also did the uh, pilot uh, testing uh, for this particular project. And when I asked potential vendors and purchasers of this product what they were worried about, it was always insightful to learn from them. First of all, they said they were concerned whether the solar panel will heat to the proper temperature. They were also concerned that you have to stand in the sun in order for the panel to work, when in fact customers would come only if they are in the shade. So that alignment of solar energy and where the customers want to be is not there. And they were worried that somebody may steal from them or a police officer may come and say what's going on and create some obstacles as well. So you always learn something new when you ask people what they think of your product. And again, this is a product which fits onto what already exists as well. It has to work in harsh circumstances and it has to be culturally appropriate. Another project focused on keeping water pure after boiling. So what happens is water is boiled, it's purified, it's ready for drinking, and people put their hands and glasses in it and then it gets recontaminated. So how do you prevent recontamination? And this was done through a dispenser uh, and the creation of this prototype was really interesting as well. 
I liked this particular project because it focused on that one part of that value chain. It was narrower and it went deeper, and I just wanted to make that point as well. So what are some general things to think about when it comes to designing products? First of all, you are focusing on needs. There are basic needs and there are aspirational needs. Having a nutritious product for my child is an aspiration of mine so that they have a better future. So there are life aspirations involved in what seem like ordinary products for us. And then there are brand aspirations as well. People will aspire to get that particular brand of cell phone, and why not? It's one way they can celebrate and consume something that's a little bit more expensive as well. So you have to think about not only needs and wants, you have to think about aspirations as well. The other thing to keep in mind is to understand life circumstances. People are deprived on multiple fronts. It's not enough if you tell somebody you need iodine and here's an iodine solution. They are also deprived on other nutrients and they're also deprived on the education that is needed in order to understand the importance of iodine. So they're deprived on multiple fronts. And so you have to provide the solution and you have to provide what goes around it as well. You have to design assuming that the product will be misused. So you have to literally user-proof the product. It has to work no matter how badly the product is used. You have to assume that the product will be used for cross purposes, which means it'll be misused. You have to assume it'll be used for multiple purposes. So a fertilizer dispenser could be used to transport products to the market and back. You have to figure out how to serve multiple purposes as well in terms of product development. You have to think about adding on to existing products. You have to think about how you can use the existing infrastructure if there are cell phones, if there are televisions and so on, and how you can leverage what is already there as well. And so these are some of the things to keep in mind when you're designing products. When it comes to product design, you also have to design for low literacy. You have to design for local sustainability, which could mean livelihood opportunities. It could mean different forms of energy that are more sustainable and so on. You also have to design for customization. Everybody will want what they get customized. And so how are you going to do that? And very often it's the person in the community who knows the community who may be able to help and be an entrepreneur who partners with you as well. You may need to develop product relevant infrastructure as well. And that doesn't mean you have to build cell towers, but it may be that if education is lacking, you have to figure out a way to provide it. You may have to connect self-help groups. You may have to connect farmers and maybe network into cooperatives and so on. 